Well, I met my wife, um, Angela, the long weekend before uh, my uni got deployed to Iraq. Um, it was almost like, you know, hey, look at me, I'm out on the beer, I'm a squaddy. Yeah. As soon as I saw her, I knew. I spoke to her on the phone, and we'd met through a mutual friend, and uh, as soon as she opened the door, um, she said, oh, you know, hi, and then she was really nice, and I just thought in my, uh, just thought as I saw her, I thought, I'm going to marry you. Uh, and while I was out in Iraq, um, uh, we started writing to each other a lot, um, and we just got to know each other. Most of our communication was through text with sort of twice weekly phone calls. Now that worked really well for us, and definitely for me. And also, you know, uh, she had a daughter when I met her. Um... And my daughter, because it meant I could see how the relationship was going to progress. A uh, little Tasman. Um, which, you know, I absolutely adore. It's strange for me because obviously I, you know, I had no experience with children or she really had a child. It meant um, that most of my time would be spent on her and we used to just communicate in the evenings. He was just a fun mate that we used to go on trips with and he, he was like her uh, adult best friend. Well, I was quite lucky really. Um, I was used to being on my own. I was a single mum with um, a three-year-old when we first met. But she was in sort of single mum mode um, and that helped her. That helped her when I went away um, uh, because, you know, she was always used to being very independent and it was just her and Tasman. My dad served in the American Air Force. When my dad first left, I must have been five years old. With our eldest, she was five and a half. And Lily had just been born. Uh, they decided to tell me that I was going out to Kenya for seven months. And I would be flying pretty much on Lily's due date. And I had to fight. I had to fight to have my paternity leave. They were saying that I couldn't have it until after I deployed to Kenya. And she was bradycardic, so she was in ICU for a little bit of time. She was like a... Um, um, a, uh, a multicolored baby. She came out, she was white, then she went blue, then she went yellow, then she went purple. Oh, well, I missed the first six months of her life. The youngest knew Daddy went away, but Daddy came back. And to be honest, she wasn't overly bothered. As, as long as she had her hugs when he was home. I think it had a more of a knock-on effect with my eldest. The eldest had already had a, a father walk out on her. That did a lot of damage to her. So having her new dad walk out, go away, go to work, come back, go away for a couple of weeks, come back. At the beginning, for the first, especially the six monther, that was hard for her because in her head, she didn't have the extended family around her to talk to. They love their dad and they love spending time with him. And when they were little, they weren't always sent on why he was going. Now my girls were pretty good at just doing doing what they were told within the family environment and working as a team when dad wasn't at home. My husband wasn't fixed to one unit. We moved every two years. I was moving around with my parent and we went to a plethora of different places. We went to um, Georgia in the United States, Florida in the United States. We came to England and we all lived in Germany. Which was ideal for sorting out the house and decluttering. But what it wasn't good for was families. I wish I'd never lived in army quarters. I wish I'd never had to deal with the army. Some points, we didn't even get an address until we were on the road. Swap all the bills, find new doctor's surgeries. Now you can't do that unless you've got an address. Like, oh, guess what? You're moving to Gloucester. You have to hit the ground running. But if you like to be organised, the only thing you can organise is your packing boxes. I definitely would have turned out differently. There was no question about that. Because I was on the honour roll, I was on the sports team and everything, I feel like I would have had a more ideal American movie life if I continued to live over there. I think I would have definitely done better in my schooling life, like most definitely, because I was on like straight A's over there. And because it's actually quite different the way English people and American people live their lives. 
Moving from America to England, I had an incredibly thick American accent. No one could understand it. And that's what made it quite difficult to make friends in like the first six months that I was over here. I found it quite difficult to build lasting relationships because I feel like I don't trust people as easily as I should. I wouldn't say I matured quicker due to my dad being in the army. Actually, I don't know. Because out of my friends, I'd say I am one of the more mature ones. I've always had an old head on my young body, if you will. And my mum does say I'm the youngest old man she knows. I feel like I essentially tried to take on a motherly role to my sister. My little sidekick, my eldest, was an absolute dream. She was, a, she was my right-hand girl. She was amazing. She had a very, very helpful sister. If that little sister of hers needed anything... Fight her mum to be able to do stuff. I was lucky to get her looking. We got together quite quickly. Like, I'd only really known him a couple of days. I definitely had to wait with her, because she, uh... She said to me that she didn't really want to date anyone in the army. Um, but then when I knew she had feelings for me, I, uh... I told her. Dating in the civvy is definitely better than dating anyone in the military because it's something different and I like it. Her reaction was, um, it's kind of neutral. She, uh, she, she hated me for not telling her, but at the same time, she loved me, so she, she didn't mind.